By the way, I'm not short. He's very tall. He's six foot four. I'm five nine. I'm tall. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Calibora here. Head candy corn. And today we decided that as small as it is, we would delve into one side of fandom, I guess we could call it. Like a, th a thing we've recently gone into now that we've been able to kind of start collecting and doing cosplay together. Yeah. I've uh, mentioned that I do cosplay Michael Myers, I do plan on videos on that soon enough, but whereas I do Michael Myers, who do you do? Ghostface. Yeah, of course. Um, and we've recently made a robe, and obviously you can't have a ghost face robe without... A ghost, a ghost face mask! Yeah, exactly, <laughs> a ghost face mask. See, we're completing each other's sentences. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, uh, so we've kind of... We're starting to slowly dip into the collecting sphere, aren't we, when it comes right. to ghost face masks. But one thing we are going to preface before we start this kind of beginning collector hole, whatever you want to call it, is that... We're not exactly into the whole collecting for the sake of collecting. Yeah, we're not just collecting just any mask. We're not getting vintage masks. We're not buying every single type of mask. Yeah, every variant. We're just we're just know, getting masks. Yeah, we're just getting masks that we personally would wear, masks that we want for our costumes. Yeah. So right now it's really small, and we do have a couple more masks that are pre-ordered on the way. The main point is is just the preface. We collect these for wearing, for costuming, and the odd one that we just like the design of that we think. We on a wall, but we're not really going to be going into collecting vintage ones or buying Multiple variants of, variants of the, the same, same mask, mask just because yeah. it's from a different factory. We're just has getting a stuff stand. that would look good with our costumes. Yeah, exactly. I think the most we'll probably do in terms of collecting vintage ones is collecting recasts and replicas. So if you see anything being done here, any masks here that you think aren't worth collecting or you think we're mistreating, they're masks to us, they're just masks. We're not really that fussed, are we? Yeah, it's a very small collection right now, you can even call it a collection. <laughs> well, this it's is the beginning. The, this is just a time capsule from where we started, so once we do have a large collection, we can look back and see where we began. Yeah, exactly. And this is more so a video for ourselves. Well, yeah, and for anyone that really wants to, you know, see how a collection starts, because you look at a lot of these... Don't just wake up in overnight... Ha like yesterday, I was talking to somebody about my Furby collection, and they're like, what? You have hundreds of Furbies, how did you get that? You must be rich, you must... But all this stuff, just, no, I've been collecting them since I was a child. I've been collecting them for many years. It's exactly. not... I didn't just wake up and... They asked me, I bet you've spent so-and-so amount of money on all these. I'm like, I don't know, it's just, it's been, it's yeah. been many, many years of collecting. It's, you don't just wake up overnight and have a huge wall full of ghost face masks. Exactly. So this is just our beginnings, and yeah. like I said, we've got two more on the way that we're really excited about. Yeah, we will be doing unboxings for those, so look out for that. But yeah, this in general is just going to be us showing where our collection has begun, so that then in the future, if it does grow to quite a sizable amount, everyone out there can see that, hey, we started from simple beginnings. And who knows, maybe our things on collecting will change. Maybe we will get so deep into it that we're going to start buying masks that we That happened wear. to me with the Furbies. I would get just the ones that I like, but then I just suddenly started, well, we might as well just get every single variant. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know I, 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 I've, I've got, got two, so I might as well complete the set of four. <laughs> now, of course, to start the collection, we've got to talk about the foxtail. Uh, this is a foxtail that I'm joking. Like, I'm sorry, I had to. That's not a ghost face. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we should start where our collection began, which technically was with this mask here. This, to the, uh, untra to the trained eyes, you might be able to recognise this, but to those who aren't trained, um, this is a glow mask. Uh, you can tell by the kind of weird greyish colouring, would you say? It's, it's like a strange translucent Yeah, colour. it's, it's yeah. got a strange colouring to it, but it does glow. And this one is very special because, as you might have noticed if you looked at the background, we have one over here that seems to be the same, but they're not. This technically started our collection because I picked this up first for candy, and if you'd like to take it off, if you look down and 
find the tag, you'll see that this is a Asda. It has an Asda tag. Now, Asda is a UK supermarket that during 2010 to 2013 had the um, exclusive rights to sell uh, Ghostface stuff in the UK. But for some reason, they only sold like certain things. And one of the things they sold from 2010 to 2012 was glow masks. So in the collecting sphere, this is called an Asda glow because it's from Asda and, well, there you go, it has a unique Asda tag. Uh, I found that in a charity shop, I believe, when I was out in my town centre. And I was around, I was a young lad in, um, in the, you know, 2010, 2012. So I remember going into the local Asda and seeing these, you know, Oct uh, October of 2010, 2011, I remember seeing these on there and I actually picked up a bleeding mask. No longer with us, but it's nice to have a bit of that history here. And I feel like this is like the only mask we really aren't gonna wear, mm -hmm. just for the sake of it's a bit of an accidental historical pickup. Yeah. <laughs> an accidental, but I love it. It's a bit of, the, it's a bit of Ghostface British history. Technically, you can say the collection started with these two on my side. So yes. these are two that I brought with me from the US. I used to work at Spencer's Gifts and also Spirit Halloween, which are the same company. So I got these when I was working at Spirit. This is just an ultra white that's been re-shrouded with some white bed sheets. <laughs> yeah, some, some white cotton that yeah. I, I did the conversion because I've kind of gotten obsessed with the white ghost face idea. So this was like my first time at practicing because it's an ultra white no one really, you know, is going to care that much if you mess up an ultra white, but it went well. Uh, so it's just an ultra white with a white shroud. Ironic. Yep, nothing special. Um, this one is also one that I picked up when I worked at Spirit Halloween. This is a bit of a mysterious case because I worked there in 2023 and we shouldn't have had glow masks. Glow masks were not released in 2023. So we think this is old stock. I don't have the tag with me. I took it off because I just thought, ooh, a glowing ghost face mask. I didn't know much about it at the time. So I have no idea exactly where it's from. There's no tag on it or anything. It did have the cardboard piece, but I no longer have that. I did modify and add um, an extra layer of the black cloth the same as the shroud so that when I wear it in my costume you can't see my eyes but I can see through it. You can see the difference between... Yeah. Here's the tags, just a spirit yeah. tag so yeah, it has like spirit. no information on it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you can see if we compare this. Like, can you see these masks are rather similar in my opinion? So I don't know, I, my, that, my going theory, both of ours, is just this is old stock that happened to end up at Spirit. That's all I can assume. But like the, the, the shape is a little bit different, but the thing is these things warp. Yeah, that and the paint job is slightly different. Yeah, the paint job is slightly different. different. So I don't know. If anyone wants to comment down below and tell us what this is, because I know that's, we know that's an Asda glow. I just don't know what this is, or I know it's, it's a glow mask. But anyways, talking about the eyes, you can see that the mesh in them, you can see right through to the white wall and even the shine of the plastic insert but this one you can't see anything through so yeah that's one of the modifications that a lot of cosplayers do it does hinder being able to see you know the visibility does get a little finicky especially in dark areas but it's worth it for especially it to have the nice black especially if you're cosplaying outdoors oh, in yeah. sunlight you can see just fine yeah it's only when it starts getting to the darker yeah. nights that we start having issues <laughs> <laughs> now I'll just take one of these down to talk about it yeah here as you might be able to recognize, this is a EU. Uh, these are the 2024 EUs. Uh, we bought two of them. Uh, not telling you where, because our I, it's our little <laughs> secret. We bought them from a very good real retailer here in the UK that has a lot of really good Ghostface stuff. And it seems to be still a little bit unknown. So we're keeping it a secret for now because we want to be able to buy as much of the Ghostface products as possible at regular prices, not inflated. But this is an EU that, as you might be able to tell, has been modified. So this EU has also been modified, just like the glow mask I had, I added that. Um fabric to the eyes so you can't see through it. This is the main mask that I use with my costume because I love the mold. Yeah, everyone loves the EU mold. It's It was used in Scream 3 I believe and, I, and as you might be able to notice compared to the EU back there, that EU is going to be converted to an EU with a white shroud. I just need to get the proper white fabric in. 
uh, but as you can see this one doesn't have the tassels at the front. The reason we modified that is to essentially make it more movie screen accurate and also just to get them out of the game out. Definitely way. easier to wear without the tassels. Yeah. The tassels are very annoying. <laughs> and I find it gives it a different look. There's something about it that definitely gives it a more kind of you see more of the forehead and it's just a little bit of a, when you a have more your, cinematic yeah. look. When you have your costume hood on, it really doesn't make any difference whether it has the tassels or not. It's just the tassels are annoying and they get in the way. And it's also a case of getting it screen accurate because whenever they're on the movies they get these masks from Fun World, the first thing they literally do is they literally have a bunch of staff sit down with a box of them and they start taking off the, the, um, the um, tassel bits from and then re-sewing them. And then here on our final stop, we have a regular 2024 EU with <laughs> with uh, some a pretty nasty paint mistake here and a little bit of runoff on the edge here of the mouth, but I'm not that fussed. Uh, but I do want to fix this. There will be a video on me not only conveying this to the white shroud, but I will be sorting out that paint mistake. So. Look forward to that video. I don't know if I'm going to redo the eye mesh. I might, I might not. It depends how I feel. Um, but that's for a later video. But with that, we kind of close off our collection. I know it's a small collection. There isn't even really that much to talk about. But I think we can close out maybe by saying, out of all of these, what is so far your favorite? out of these masks, so I'll let Candy go first. That's a very easy question. Obviously it's the EU. Yeah. I love the EU mold. That's the one I use for my ghost face costume. I do have this um, glow that I will be taking the tassels off of it because I'm going to use it for my costume during nighttime. Yeah, we, we find we find yeah. decide that we want to use that for a costume. Nighttime with the trick-or-treaters, things like that, um, but the EU is my go-to. I think it's a gorgeous mask, and even though my Scream robe is a Scream 1 robe, for the most part, <laughs> um, I love the look of the EU with my robe. Yeah. I, do, I, I would like maybe in the future for us to get our hands on a replica Gem 1. Maybe. Yeah, just to see how that would look. And just see how that yeah. looks, and also it's nice to have, do you know what I mean? Because I do like the look of the Gem 1, it is, you know, the original Yeah, it, that would look really cool. Yeah. And for me, honestly, I love... The, you know, the EU molds, I think they're like, everyone loves the EU molds, yeah. And I feel like until I convert this and fix up that little paint mistake, until I convert this, personally, my favorite at the moment is the Yazda Glow, just because I have a sentimental connection to that, the fact that, you know, I grew up in the time where these things popped up in ads and I kick myself that I never got one. I never picked one up. I picked up the bleeding mask, what's which funny, broke. And... What's funny is when I was a kid, I also had a bleeding mask from Spirit Halloween. So we both as kids had, of course, the bleeding mask. Which? Which inevitably breaks. Which inevitably breaks. <laughs> or leaks. Or leaks. I don't think mine broke. I think it was just a case of mine got old and the blood congealed and then just wouldn't go through the tube. Yeah, so. mine didn't break. Mine had a leak at the, yeah. like, heart pump. It started leaking and it was messy, so of course my mom made me throw it out, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with that, that's our little collection. So that's the collection. Uh, thank you so much if you've watched all the way through, and I'm sorry for that beginning, there was a little long, wasn't it? <laughs> but thank you so much if you watched all the way through. I know it's only small beginnings, but hopefully it'll grow in time. I thank you all for watching, and hey, if you like this, or maybe you've liked some of the other videos we've done, maybe you should stick around because October's coming, spooky season will be starting, and along with spooky season is gonna come some spooky content. Some St Halloween hunts? Yeah, I some Halloween wait. hunts. We're going to be doing some Halloween hunts around the UK, which I know will be interesting because a lot of the Halloween hunts are American based. Yeah, it's not fair. Of, I mean, as someone who lived in America for a long time, it's interesting to see what kind of Halloween offerings there are in other countries. Yes. I know it's, for the most part, slim pickings. Slim pickings compared to the US, but a lot of interesting molds and things that you don't see in other countries. So it's really cool to be able to view that. And along with that, we're also going to be putting out some spooky uh, product reviews. Yeah, we got some Halloween props we're going to review. We're very excited about it. Yeah, we're very excited for them. It's a, it's going to be a very interesting project and just some small videos here and there. And if you're not into horror or spooky stuff, we've got other videos coming. We've got some Furby stuff coming along, mm -hmm. haven't we? Yep. That should be quite a lot of fun for all you vintage, you know, toy fans. And with that, this has been Calibara. And candy corn. And we hopefully will see all of you in the next video.
Bye-bye. <laughs>